This Sunday, I will be back at my home park, Parc Asterix in France. Their latest ride get most of the attention nowadays, but Asterix was also known for a long time for its infamous Vekoma loop. Say hello to Guderix, a custo so bad that only Zempera Volare plays lower on Mitch Hawker's best coaster pole. That's right, even worse than SLC's and Manhattan Express, or whatever this coaster's new name is. Surprisingly, even though everyone will agree that Guderix is an awful ride, some people still argue that Pakistarix should keep it because of its iconic status within the park. I honestly beg to differ, but that leads me to the topic of this video. Should parks demolish all coasters? I know what you're probably thinking. If an old coaster is really bad, just tear it down of course. Simple answer, end of video. Or is it? If a park removes a roller coaster, said park has to replace it with another ride. Otherwise, the lineup would decrease. This could be especially bad for small, struggling parks, which would be left off with a huge gap to fill. In that less than ideal case, keeping a rusty Togo or Vekoma is still the best option because the park can't afford a better replacement. As lame as it sounds, a bad coaster is better than no coaster in this situation. Then there is the case of historical significance, particularly if the ride looks photogenic. Whether it's the first modern coaster to have a vertical loop, or an iconic woody that stood for decades, a bike can provide a rare and distinctive experience with an old coaster. I know some veteran coasters have gotten quite rough and uncomfortable, but in an era where we're literally spoiled with shining new awesome rides, I think riding once in a while a historical coaster gives you a proper measure of the tremendous progress the industry has made. Now you can call me a weirdo for this argument. But I find that some of the old Ratley and Bouncy coasters have pure comedy value. That makes any sense to you. Watching on ride POVs of truly terrible rides, which most of them are at least 20 years old, is like seeing a Ned Wood movie that is so bad it's good. Riding crappy old stuff with other enthusiasts is sort of a memorable rite of passage. That is part of being an enthusiast, in my opinion. Okay, I realize I've been playing the devil's advocate for way too long, haven't I? In reality, I think most all coasters should get scrapped. Most of those rides are uninteresting, truly awful, and the iconic landmark coasters I talked about earlier are rare exceptions. Plus, you can still pay tribute to the defunct ride by keeping and exhibiting a remaining section of track. For parks which are almost running out of space, getting rid of a dated coaster frees up a precious plot of land that could be used for an exciting new ride. You may lose a nostalgic attraction, but think of the fantastic opportunities ahead. We live in a truly wonderful era of coaster design improvement, with the likes of RMC, Intermin, Vekoma, BNM, and Mac creating incredible rides. Thus, I'm sure old mundane coasters would be quickly forgotten. To pick an extreme example, who actually regrets Viper at Six Flags Great Adventure making way for El Toro? In many cases, Keeping an old coaster means getting stuck in the past. Unless you properly maintain a truly symbolic coaster, it's hard to attract people with dusty old rides. There's only a few different coasters I wish were still standing and operational. Most of the time, parks make the correct decision to tear down an aging ride, no matter how sad it may be.